The 777 is due to enter service in 2022. It's the highest capacity twin-engine aircraft yet developed and has already proven popular with airlines with 350 orders as of July 2020. Today we'll take an in-depth look at the 777X, picking out some of the most interesting details about this program as well as highlighting why it stands out from other aircraft. The Boeing 777 has been the best-selling wide-body aircraft to date. It first flew in 1994 and now 25 years later it's getting a replacement the 777X. This update brings with it a lot of improvements. It'll carry more people and fly further than previous versions. Despite the updates, it still maintains much in common with the 777-200 and the 777-300, both structurally and operationally. According to Boeing, the 777-9 will offer a typical two-class seating capacity of 426. This is the largest of any twin-engine aircraft to date. For comparison, the A350-900 offers 315 and the A350-1000, 369. 777-300 has a capacity of 368. The 777 is actually closer to the capacity of some four-engine aircraft. The A340-600 offers a two-class capacity of 440, while the 747-8 has a typical three-class capacity of 467. The gap between four- and two-engine aircraft has been narrowing for some time. With ETOPS improvements, there are few areas that twin jets cannot fly. The first amongst commercial aircraft, the 777X will feature wingtips that fold when on the ground. This will bring several advantages. The longer wings allow for more efficient in-flight operations, while folding them on the ground means the aircraft can access more airports. When extended, the wings offer a span of 71.75 meters. Larger wings improve the aerodynamics and efficiency of the aircraft, but when on the ground they can be folded so that the wingspan is just 64.8 meters. This is the same as the 777's wingspan and allows the 777X to use the same taxiway and gate facilities. It's only the second time that Boeing has redesigned the wing on an existing aircraft. It first did this with the 737, introducing a new wing design for the next generation series. One of the difficulties faced by the Airbus A380 was its size and the limits this placed on airport operations. It's categorized in the largest of the six groups defined by FAA's Airplane Design Group, ADG. This largest group is limited in the number of airports where it can operate. The folding wings keep the 777X in the second largest group. Boeing is offering two versions of the 777X. The 777-9 is the larger variant and will launch first. This has started test flights and is due to enter service with Emirates in 2022. The 777-8 is a shorter version, 69.8 meters compared with 76.7 meters. It'll have a lower passenger capacity, but instead features a longer range. In fact, its range of 16,170 kilometers will make it a suitable replacement for the 777-200LR and a strong competitor for the A350-1000, which has a range of 16,100 kilometers. It should particularly appeal to Middle Eastern operators wanting to fly to the U.S. West Coast. However, the shorter 777 has yet to start construction, with the start of development being pushed back to 2021. According to data from Boeing, this is how the two variants compare. The 777-8 can carry 384 passengers to a range of 8,730 nautical miles or 16,170 kilometers, while the 777-9 can carry 426 passengers to a range of 7,285 nautical miles or 13,500 kilometers. Boeing has also proposed a larger version of the 777X. The 777-10 would be stretched by 3.5 meters over the 777-9, adding four more rows. This would be the world's longest commercial aircraft. It would compete well against the A380 or even a further stretch of the A350 if that were to ever happen. As yet, though, there is no confirmation it'll go ahead. Boeing made some comments about the chances of a 777-10 at the Farnborough Air Show in 2016. Boeing Commercial Airplanes Chief Executive Ray Connor told Flight Global, We have the ability to do it. If somebody wanted more capacity, that's a pretty straightforward deal for us to do. In terms of orders, as of July 2020, over 300 aircraft have been ordered by eight airlines. These carriers are Emirates, 126 aircraft. Qatar Airways, 60 aircraft, Etihad Airways, 25 aircraft, 
Cathay Pacific, 21 aircraft, Singapore Airlines, 20 aircraft, ANA, 20 aircraft, Lufthansa, 20 aircraft, and British Airways, 18 aircraft. Middle Eastern airline Emirates placed the largest order for the 777X when it ordered 150 aircraft in July 2014. 35 Boeing 777-8s and 115 Boeing 777-9s. This was not just the largest order for the 777X, but it's one of the largest ever single orders for commercial aircraft based on value at $76 billion list price. Since then, Emirates has amended its order, swapping 24 777X aircraft to 30 Boeing 787-9 Dreamliners. The 777X will retain an aluminium fuselage rather than a lighter composite structure as used on the 787 and the competing A350. Boeing has defended this choice, explaining that its focus has been on improving the popular 777 and introducing a derivative rather than a brand new aircraft. This is a strategy it also follows for the 737 family. The metal fuselage of the 777X will be heavier than a composite material, but this is compensated for by the new engines and wing design. The cabin width is increased 4 inches over the 777. This is achieved through thinner walls and more efficient insulation. This will be especially noticeable in economy and premium economy classes, where the extra width is not enough to add an extra seat, but should allow a bit of extra seat width. Airlines will most likely go with a ten abreast economy layout, but will have some extra space to use. Any extra width will help achieve a spacious feeling for passengers, but Boeing hopes to go further with the 777X and improve on passenger comfort. Boeing's cabin experience and revenue analysis regional director Kent Craver explained, We've learned a lot since the 777 was first introduced in the 1990s, especially a lot into human psychology during travel. We use lighting and the architecture to create not only physical space, which is finite, but a sense of spaciousness, so on a psychological level. The 777X will feature larger passenger windows than the 777, giving more light in the cabin and better viewing for passengers. On the 777, windows are 140 square inches, while on the A350, they're only 125 square inches. The 777X goes a step further and has windows that are 162 square inches. The windows are also placed higher in the fuselage to increase viewing. They'll also feature the same electronic dimming technology as used on the 787. They'll not be as large though as the 787 windows, which are the largest of any commercial aircraft made possible by the composite fuselage, which is more resistant to fatigue. Raising the pressure inside the cabin has been one of the most significant developments for passengers in recent years. Doing this leads to a more comfortable flight with subdued jet lag effects. With a simulated lower altitude, the air is denser and it's easier for the body to oxygenate itself. Most aircraft cabins are pressurized to 8,000 feet. Boeing lowered that for the 787 to 6,000 feet. It'll use similar pressurization for the 777X. This is despite the fact that the 777X has an aluminium fuselage as opposed to the composite fuselage of the 787. In theory, the increased air pressure in the cabin will place greater stress on the aluminium airframe and reduce its service life, which is why we've not typically seen this with other aircraft. Boeing believes, though, that they can achieve this with the 777X. In reporting by Business Insider, Boeing's Kent Craver explained, we also understand the requirements of the lower cabin altitude in terms of cycles and pressures on the fuselage. As a result, we can achieve it with a few local reinforcements and change those loads out to accommodate lower cabin altitude. One more area of passenger experience that Boeing will improve upon is luggage storage. The 777X will add larger overhead bins, allowing luggage to be loaded on its side. This may sound like a small change, but with bags in the cabin increasing as airlines introduce new baggage pricing strategies, having more space and easier access to luggage during the flight will be an advantage. One of the most exciting aspects for passengers will be the flagship status of the 777X with airlines. Many airlines will install their most luxurious and up-to-date seating. Some are even introducing new premium cabins for it. Some examples we know of thus far include the following. British Airways has confirmed it'll install its new club suite on the 777X. This is an upgraded business class that features suite-style seats with partial doors. Lufthansa will launch a new business class product with the 777X, featuring open seats but in a more spacious layout than used on other aircraft. 
Singapore Airlines already has some of the best business and first-class products, and there's a possibility that it'll develop new ones for the 777X. However, this is not yet confirmed. Emirates will adopt a similar seat to that used in business class on its A380 aircraft. This is a distinct improvement from its offering on the 777, with one-to-one -one seating as opposed to 232. It'll also debut a new premium economy product and will use its new 777 first class. Qatar Airways is looking at installing an ultra-premium first class. This would only be on some of its 777-9 aircraft and most likely serving European routes. The launch could coincide with the retirement of its A380s around 2028. The 777X uses the new General Electric GE9X engines. General Electric designed this engine specifically for the 777X, which is derived from their GE90 engine used on the 777. It offers 134,300 pounds of thrust, which is a world record for a commercial engine, according to General Electric's report. The previous record was held by the GE90 engine at 127,900 pounds. Changes with the GE9X engine include a larger diameter fan with fewer blades, 16 instead of 22, use of lighter carbon fiber composite materials, and a higher bypass ratio, offering better propulsion efficiency. These changes help to reduce the weight of the engine and allow for its larger size. These engines are enormous as well as powerful. At 13 feet in diameter, it's wider than the fuselage of the Boeing 737. Despite the largest engines, higher capacity and huge range, the 777X will be an extremely efficient aircraft. It offers a cost per seat 13% lower than the 777-300ER and 33% lower than the 747-400, according to an analysis by the Air Current. It's hard to compare efficiency with other aircraft until it's in service. Boeing, however, claims that the 777 will offer 4% lower operating costs than the A350-1000. The 7799 takes things further with 11% lower costs. According to Forbes, this becomes more significant if airlines adopt the higher capacity and higher cargo capacity model and think in terms of a carbon footprint per capita. All these features, however, come at a price. The 777 lists at $425.8 million, compared to $361.5 million for the 777-300ER and $418 million for the 747-8. In fact, this is Boeing's most expensive aircraft to date. But Airbus takes top place for the most expensive aircraft, with the A380's list price of $445.6 million. More importantly, though, the A350-1000 comes in lower at $366 million. Testing of the 777X began in 2019, with the first test flights taking place in early 2020. These flights were delayed after problems with the GE9X engines and issues with structural testing. In September 2019, the fuselage was ripped apart during stress testing. This occurred close to the maximum stress levels, 99% of the target, and the rapid depressurization of the fuselage caused the damage. The test aircraft was written off, but the test does not need to be repeated. Boeing claims it did not have an impact on schedules. When it comes to cargo operations, there are no official plans for a freighter version of the 777X as yet. In a 2015 communication, however, Boeing discussed a possible freight version based on the 7778 airframe to follow 18 to 24 months after the passenger 7778. There is support from airlines, too. At the Paris Air Show in 2019, Qatar Airways expressed its desire for a 777X freighter to be made available, along with its willingness to be the launch customer for it. Qatar Airways Chief Executive Akbar al Bakr explained, saying, by 2025, our initial freighters will be getting about 10 years old, so we'll need to replace them. Hopefully, Boeing will launch a 777X-based freighter. Boeing already dominates the cargo market with the 777 and 747 freighter versions. A logical continuation would be to do so for the 777X with all of its engine and efficiency benefits. There is certainly space in the market. In fact, Boeing claims that an additional 1,040 wide-body freighters will be needed in the coming 20 years. What do you think of the 777X? Do you think it'll be all it's cracked up to be? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com?
be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.